Okay. Can, uh, maybe what we could do <laughs> is go back and just recap a little bit of what we've been talking about. We are talking about uh, the one book, one Nebraska, Death Zones and Darling Spies, Seven Years of Vietnam War Reporting by Beverly D. Keever. Um, apparently, you probably didn't hear any of what we said, so I will just introduce ourselves real quickly. I'm Mary Jo Ryan. I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Nebraska Library Commission. I'm Ron Meyer. I used to live at Superior, Nebraska, and was a NMA Vietnam veteran. I'm Lois Meyer, and I am a member of the board of One Book, One Nebraska, which is one of the, or excuse me, of the Nebraska Center for the Book, which is one of the sponsors for the One Book, One Nebraska program. I'm Ron <laughs> Wagner, director of the Library Commission, a member of the Nebraska Center for the Book board, and also with Lois and some others, a member of the One Book, One Nebraska committee, selection committee. Great. And as we talked about earlier, the One Book, One Nebraska program encourages people all across the state to read the same book and talk about it. It happens in libraries and bookstores and individuals and friend groups and book clubs and all kinds of things all across the state. A committee of the Nebraska Center for the Book, which Rod and Lois are on, reads these books. And right now you're reading for this coming year, correct? We are. We yeah. Are. Mm -hmm. And so they each read what? Three, four, five books, did you say? Three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, seven. Case, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a busy summer. Mm -hmm. um, and the committee members uh, divide the books up. We want to be sure that every book is considered that is nominated. And we um, offer our observations from our readings and. Uh, determine uh, or narrow down the number of books that were nominated to a small number that we then pass on to the board to make the final selection. Great. And at this point uh, we are getting very close to um, narrowing that down. Uh, the, the one book, one Nebraska for 2016 will be announced at our festival <clears throat> in November. Yeah, the Celebration of Nebraska Books mm -hmm. here in Lincoln, mm -hmm. November 14th. So we'll be making that announcement for 2016. Um, and, the, and the short list will be publicized as well. Yes, that's right. The finalists will send us a news release out in a few weeks probably. Is that right? When will your committee give us the finalists, do you think? Um, within a few weeks, a, few a couple weeks. weeks. Well. We need to get it to the board so they can make the determination by the yeah. celebration. Fabulous. The board will vote, mm -hmm. and that'll be how they'll make mm -hmm. the decision. Mm -hmm. um, the, this whole program, the One Book, One Nebraska program, is sponsored by the Nebraska Center for the Book, Humanities Nebraska, Nebraska Library Commission, and University of Nebraska Press. We're moving kind of quickly, theoretically, through these slides. There we go. Um, these are the books that we've had in the past 11 years, 2005 to 2015, starting with My Antonia, and this year we're reading Death Zones and Darling Spies. Um, again, a nonfiction story by a Nebraska author. She was a, a Pulitzer Prize winning, or not, Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist. Um, and she, her, her story about the besieged outpost of Quezon in 1968 was what she was nominated for. She's the longest serving American corresponding correspondent covering the Vietnam War. And this is truly a story of, of the Vietnam War and many sides of it, I would say. Mm -hmm. she, her goal was to tell the story so that people at home knew more facts about what was really happening in Vietnam. But in the process, she also tells a lot about what was happening, not just to our American soldiers, but in the politics and government of Vietnam yeah, as well. Yeah, right. And that's one of the things you mentioned, right, yeah, Ron? That yeah, the people of Vietnam on both sides, the Viet Cong and also mm -hmm. the South. Telling that, that story of the politics you mentioned yeah. was one of the interesting points here that you yeah. learn a lot about the politics yeah. of North Vietnam and South Vietnam both. And Lois, you mentioned that as reading this book as a woman and as a teacher mm -hmm. gave you a lot of insight and Yes, it did. I think it, uh, especially uh, 
in the field of journalism. Um, it's it's an, a, a wonderful example of very fine journalistic writing, and uh, I would encourage people who uh, teach journalism in high school, um, especially in college, to have students read this book uh, because of um, journalism now, I think, is, is too often shouting matches and, and um, <laughs> arguments, <laughs> arguments yeah. and not a whole lot of facts to back up these arguments. And what she does in this book is um, really do the, the hard work that is necessary to find out what is truth for people on both sides. And what is truth for people on both sides isn't always the same truth. And I think that's an interesting concept to discuss. And an interesting thing to have teenagers, high school students, mm -hmm. explore. Because they won't remember any of this, obviously, no. of course. You know, this is way beyond their mm -hmm. years. But but those issues of the what is the truth and what does it mean to, to tell a story of truth, mm -hmm. that's a cool thing for them to be thinking about. <laughs> well, and when I originally recommended that my husband read the book because of his um, experience in Vietnam as an American Marine, uh, his perspective at 19, you know, was one that he was, well, I'll let you. Well, you know, I mean, when you're going through military training, you're indoctrinated into believing that what you're doing is the, the honorable thing to be doing. And so you go into these situations with that mindset and it's only afterwards that you begin to question what the whole thing was. And, and part of where my questioning began is when I started reading other journalists that served in Vietnam and some of their the books that they had written. And this book just reinforces everything that I had uh, read about Vietnam since I served there. Such such a big picture look this book is, yes. mm -hmm. and and when you're as you say a 19 year old marine, you have a, a more narrow, yeah. obviously perspective because that's what you need to focus on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess what we're hearing is all across the state that people are reading this book in groups and libraries are checking it out, uh, checking out the book club kits, and that it's really uh, making. Uh, quite an impact, and we're getting a lot of feedback that it's an excellent book to read. And and I thought, listening to her, I did get to hear her when she was in Hebron to visit her mother on her one, her mother's 100th birthday. So I did get to hear the author speak. They had a special library program at the nursing home where her mom lives, and she was she was really great. And and her recall of all of this is fabulous. And so someone asked her that, of course, when she was speaking, said. How can you remember all this? And she said, "Well, I I don't remember it all. I kept everything, every note, every posting, every story, every <laughs> photograph. I kept it all and sent it all home. And so I had it to go through to do research when I was writing the book. So it's all based. It's not based on my recall. It's no. based on everything I wrote and took notes on and everything from that time period." And she had a great story. Her husband, Chuck, was there with her. And she had a great story. They said, well, how did you meet your... Somebody asked her the question, how did you meet your husband? And she said, well, when I was in Vietnam, I was tramping all over. I had a pair of combat boots, and I bought a pair of a set of fatigues. And I was tramping all over trying to follow the troops around and see what they were doing and go to these outposts. And finally, the Marines said, we better find somebody who can kind of show her around so she doesn't get herself hurt or something, so she said. So they, they assigned this young Marine to show me around, and he's been doing it ever since. <laughs> she says, it just goes to show you, give a Marine an order, he takes it seriously. <laughs> so they were very cute, and I, I had a great time talking to him, and I, I just respected everything that she experienced and related so much. I, she was just a really... An exciting thing for a young woman who grew up in a small town, as you said, in Nebraska, and went to country school, and 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 what she said is she really, really wanted to go to China, but she, and the and the suggestion of a professor 
she decided to stop in this place called French Indochina and see what was really going on there. And of course, could never leave because it was just so compelling to tell this story. So we, of course, all of us are really recommending the book. We're sorry that the first part of our discussion may have been lost in translation here. We might have not um, been able to catch it, but that's okay. We're going to move on. We see it's... Uh, yeah. Well, while we're moving uh -huh. on, um, I don't have the details, but her papers have been, she has given her papers to the University of Nebraska Lincoln and are being managed by the archives uh, staff there. So. At, the, at the University Libraries, yeah. yes. Mary Ellen Ducey is someone who could definitely give us more information about that, and hopefully she will. When we hopefully At the will. celebration of Nebraska Books, we'll have more details on the archiving of her materials and papers and, mm -hmm. and her, her story that's been captured there. Um, I just wanted to mention that we know that Nebraskans all across the state are actively engaged in reading this book and talking about it, and they'll keep on doing it throughout 2015. Um, the book club kits are booked already through March 2016, which is a good reminder that you don't have to read the one book, one Nebraska during the year. You can read it the next year if you want to. Um, and if you want to check out the news and events um, tab on our website, which is onebook.nebraska.gov, if you check out that news and events tab, you'll see what's going on with One Book, One Nebraska, where the uh, programs are that are being held and the book discussions. Um, we also invite you to join the conversation here on Facebook. Um, one Book, One Nebraska has a Facebook page, and I will actually go to that, potentially. Let's see if I can do it. Try that. Okay, here we are. Um, you can see that we have a variety of things that we've posted on Facebook. One of these is the museum exhibit at Washington, D.C. featured the press pass for Beverly D. Kiever um, at uh, in one of the exhibit um, displays, and so I took a picture of it because I was so excited to see her press pass. But you can see she's just a young kid, really, as, as so many of the soldiers were in Vietnam. And it was funny, when she left, it said in the legend here on the, on the uh, exhibit board, it said, fellow reporters gave Beverly D. Kiever this North Vietnamese army shovel when she left in 1969, noting her mastery of Vietnam's journalistic vagaries in the inscription, and this was her press pass when she was reporting for the Christian Science Monitor. And then on Facebook, of course, you just get more reminders about the celebration. But I did have... Uh, yeah, this is the actual exhibit in the museum, and you can see it was a very moving thing, by the way. Uh, there was one, one room which was nothing but television reporting from the Vietnam War on an endless loop, and it was hard to be in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very hard, because it was a horrible reminder of that time, but also very, um, very interesting juxtaposition to the kind of reporting we see now versus the kind of reporting that Americans saw in those days, yeah. which is pretty raw and pretty immediate, as opposed to translated for us later, you know, kind of thing. So I recommend that you join our Facebook page and join the conversation. I also really want to suggest that you create a local program. Um, we have a publicity toolkit, which is a digital media kit. We have posters that are easy to use on our website. Let me just go to that. Right, not that. <laughs> The website is there, right there. One book, one Nebraska, or one book dot. Oh, that's not it. Whoops. The website is one book dot Nebraska dot gov, and um, you can see again we have information about the book, information about the author information about how to get involved and news and events. And under get involved, there's quite a bit of information. One of them is this digital media kit, which can help you with publicity. 
The other is some promotional tools, which include some posters. So let me go back to what probably Okay. Um, we also have this <laughs> discussion questions <laughs> that are very helpful. Ron and, and Lois worked on those, and I think that we've gotten a lot of good feedback on those being very helpful in the discussion. Um, we have book club kits that libraries uh, can check out for their book clubs, which includes some bookmarks and some, some of the books, um, of course, the website and other resources. But one of the things I really wanted to point out is that Humanities Nebraska has, through their Speakers Bureau, set us up with a presenter, and they will actually provide libraries and other nonprofit groups with the funding to pay for the presenter's expenses. Um, the name of the, the program that Thomas uh, Berg presents is Beverly Deep Kiever, An Unconventional Woman for an Unconventional War. And I think that would, would draw a lot of people who wanted to talk about the book and wanted to hear his take on it. He's a history, uh, Department of History lecturer at, here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. His name is Thomas Berg. And he describes his presentation as um, the fact that she champions women as capable war correspondents and trounces the misconception that American press, quote unquote, lost the war for America. So I, I really think this is a very in, interesting program, and, and we will have him at the at the celebration to give us some some of these insights and share with us some of what he's learned in his research. So that should be good. So get involved. Schedule a book club or a book talk in the library. Book a program with Humanities Nebraska with that speaker that I just spoke of or local veterans, local journalists who want to talk about journalism then and now, um, a history professor at your high school. I mean, you can think of a lot of people who would be interested in a panel discussion mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. some programming on this. I would invite you, if, if any of you out there are interested in doing a local radio or TV talk show, I would be happy to help you put together some materials to try to get your local TV or radio station interested in this. Um, there are several videos on our website of author interviews with Beverly Deep Kiever, and like I said, she's a great talker, great speaker. She does a great interview, so that would be an interesting thing just to do a screening of that for people. And any other ideas you have for programming on, around this book? Can you guys think of anything or that libraries could do, or bookstores could do, or schools could do, that anyone would be interested yeah. in? I, you know, I, I think, like you say, if, if you could get the the uh, Humanities Nebraska speaker, the professor, I think that would be an excellent, uh, he's available to schools and any kind of organization. Yeah, could, and it would really okay. get, I think it would get people talking. I think so, too. I think so, too. So, just a reminder to join us at the November 14th celebration of Nebraska Books. Um, like I said, we will be featuring um, the Humanities Nebraska speaker, Thomas Berg, but we will also have some other activities going on. It takes place at 1200 N Street. At 1.30, the Nebraska Center for the Book Annual Meeting will be held, and that is open. It's an open meeting. Uh, at 2.45 is the presentation by Thomas Berg. At 3.30, uh, we will have the presentation of the Jane, the 2015 Jane Geske Award. And that's an award, uh, it's a secret right at the moment. We do not know who's going to receive it, but it's always given to a Nebraska organization that really exemplifies their work in supporting literacy, in literature, reading, writing. So it, there's been a list of fine organizations that have received that award. There'll be another one receiving it that day. Secret, though, who it is at this moment. Yeah. And we will also have presentations by the 2015 Nebraska Book Award winning authors. And, Rod, you've been talking to some of them. It sounds yeah. like several of them are coming, right? Yes, we've had a great response uh, from the people who have books uh, selected as our winners. And uh, we're, we expect to have really good participation from them. They're inviting friends and family to join them. So it'll be a great celebration. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that. That's always interesting to hear them read from their work. And also sometimes they'll talk a little bit about how they came to write that work. And it's always fascinating. 
Um, the other thing we'll do, as we've said earlier, is we will announce the 2016 One Book, One Nebraska book read. So you will, if you come there, you'll be the first to know what will be the book for 2016. We'll have a little awards reception and book signing by those winning authors, and we'll be done around 6.30. So hopefully a lot of you will join us. This is just my little reminder that, it's, that you can currently nominate a title for 2017. It seems ridiculous. We haven't even announced 2016. But people are actually starting to nominate for 2017, which is great. And so if you go to this web address, which is centerforthebook.nebraska.gov, and you go to programs, and then you'll come to this online form, and you can either use the online form or send an email. So please don't. Don't forget that now is the time to do it. And if you have any other questions or would like any other information, you can certainly contact me or go to our website or go to our Facebook page. Rod and Ron and Lois, do you have any other questions or anything else you want to add? Well, I think what was interesting about this book also and the whole complexity of war, when you get to the end of the book, there's lots of surprises. Oh, I know, the last chapter. <laughs> I know, I know. That was one of the things, there was a one of the discussion questions says, let me see if I can find it. Did you find the final chapter surprising? Discuss why or why not. You could spend the whole this whole time talking yeah. about that, couldn't you? Yeah. Very interesting. Anything from our audience? Like any questions that you can type in the chat box? I don't see any there. We apologize for the uh, problem we had earlier and hope that you were able to catch up with us. We had a great conversation, but I don't think anybody heard it. <laughs> so we started over. <laughs> and now we're good to go. Thank you, everyone. Do we know what the show is next week? Um, next week's show is... Let's see. Oh, what else? Steam at your library. So Steam at your library. We talked about um, science, science, technology, technology engineering, engineering, arts, arts, arts music. and music. No, mathematics. 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 Well, there be music in there, too. Music and mathematics. Yeah. They are the same. No, but they, <laughs> they are similar. Music and mathematics very, have a, have a similarity. Yes, they yeah. are. So arts does include music. Yeah. <laughs> Chad Marin at the... Um, St. Petersburg College in Florida. Right. We're going to present Great. on uh, how to do uh, incorporating STEAM into the educational framework and uh, what the library can do. Great. So, sounds like a very good program. We're going to have a great program next week. Okay, join us again next week. Thank, Thank you, everyone, everyone for Wednesday. joining Thank us. Everyone. And um, we will end now. Uh, so, thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week.